Hey guys, this is Trevor Sullivan coming to you with another video. And today we are going to be talking about another PowerShell module. And this module is a very simple module. It allows you to send operating system level notifications from your PowerShell scripts. And one of the cool things about this module is that it actually works cross-platform in PowerShell Core Edition. So the name of the module that we're going to take a look at is called Posh Notify. And it was open sourced on GitHub just recently from a few different authors. And so I just wanted to show you really quickly how this works. So for starters, we're going to call the built in find module command and search for star notify. So this is just to give you an idea of how you can search for different PowerShell modules using the find module command. Uh, find module is built into PowerShell uh, 5.1 and later, so it should be built into PowerShell Core Edition as well if you're running it on cross-platform operating systems like uh, Windows 10, Linux, and Mac OS. So we have a few different modules here, but the one I am particularly referring to is called Posh Notify without the dash in the middle there. So let's go ahead and install that module. We'll do install module, Posh Notify, and then we're going to tack on the scope of current user, which is going to install the module to our current user directory rather than requiring administrative permissions to install under the all users directory under program files. So what we can do now is now that we've got this module installed is run PowerShell's built in get command and explore the commands that are available inside of it. Now you'll notice that there's only a single command that is exported from the posh notify module called send dash OS notification. So it's a pretty straightforward module to use. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do here is call get help on the command. And you can see we've got some useful built in help here. It displays toast notifications on Linux, Mac, and Windows, as we talked about earlier. Now, as far as how to utilize this command, it's pretty straightforward. We call the command, we have the body parameter, which is required uh, because it's not enclosed in square braces. That's an indication that it is required. And then here, because it is in square braces, we have an optional parameter called title. So we can set the title and the body of the notification. We also have an option here to specify an icon path, but I haven't had a chance to try that out yet myself. So let's go ahead and start by just calling send OS notification. Uh, I'm going to hit control KM and set my language mode in VS Code to PowerShell so that I get IntelliSense here. And if I hit control space on what I've already typed here, I can just hit enter and auto complete that. Next, I will add the body parameter and I'm just going to say I like bacon. And let's go ahead and hit F8 and see what happens. OK, so there's a few defaults here down in the top, bottom right corner of the screen. So I have a PowerShell icon as the default. It says that the notification is being sent from the Windows PowerShell application, because uh, I'm actually calling it from Windows PowerShell, which is the, the Windows exclusive version of PowerShell, not PowerShell Core Edition, which is the cross-platform version. But I, I could use PowerShell Core if I wanted to. Uh, and you can see I've got the body here, I like bacon. And then by default, the title is PowerShell notification. So what if I wanted to change that? Well, just tack on the title here and say uh, food app. Let's hit F8 again. And now we've successfully changed. You can see on this notification here, we've changed the title to food app. Now, one of the things I noticed is that there's no parameter to change the application that the, the toast notification is being sent from. So at the moment, that's not customizable, but apparently one of the authors of this module, uh, Josh over in New Zealand, has indicated that there is potentially a workaround by using a 
Microsoft uh, Windows 10 application and an Apex package to potentially kind of customize that. So maybe we'll see that feature show up in a future version, but just be aware that as of the current 0.1.2 version, it's uh, not possible to change that. So I've specified a couple of static values in my test script here, but let's say that we wanted to um, you know, inject some dynamic values in here. So maybe you want like CPU utilization or something like that. So I'm going to change the title to CPU, CPU space utilization. And then under the body, I'm going to say, uh, hey, Trevor, CPU utilization is at X percentage. And then I'm going to add a back tick, which some people are going to chastise me for, just to do line continuation. So we're just going to basically say we're going to continue this line on the next line. And this is just for readability for the purposes of this demonstration. I don't personally condone using back ticks as a general rule just because they're kind of hard to read. And if you accidentally put a space at the end of the line, it actually breaks the line continuation, but thankfully our PowerShell extension for VS Code is actually catching that by get, putting a little squiggly there and giving us a warning. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, so yeah. So under my body parameter, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap that in parentheses. And then I'm going to use the dash F operator in PowerShell to perform .NET string formatting, which basically means that with that curly brace with the zero inside of it, we're going to substitute a value for that. And the value that I'm going to plug in there, I'm going to get from the get counter command. And get counter, uh, I have a whole separate video that talks about how to read performance counter information. But for the time being, I'm just going to grab this percent processor time performance counter, and I'm going to inject that value, the value of that counter, as an integer into the body string. So let's start by kind of experimenting with our command with get counter to make sure that it's correct. So I'm going to drill into the counter samples property over here because we're actually getting a bunch of different counter samples. So let's hit F8 and run that. So now we've got a few different paths. So let's see if I can index into item number one, which will actually be the second item in the array. And then I'll grab the cooked value property from that. Awesome. So now I've got this cooked value for the CPU utilization. I will convert that to, or sorry, I'll do a get member on that. I think it's a double value. And sure enough, it's a system.double. So what I'm going to do is cast that to an integer. And now we are correctly getting just the integer uh, portion of the performance counter. So I can basically take this, uh, this little command that I've written up here and wrap it in parentheses and inject it into my string here. So now every time that I hit F8 to run the send OS notification command, it's going to send me a notification with my current CPU utilization as a dynamic value. So that's just a really quick example of how to use the send OS notification command. Uh, you can find this project on GitHub as well as the PowerShell gallery, powershellgallery.com. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to share about it. So leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, if you'd like to see more content similar to this. Um, I've got a bunch of other, other videos on this channel as well, so please go check those out as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and if you'd like to financially support this channel and encourage the development of future content, please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Trevor Sullivan. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.